Hey everyone, it's Leanne. Welcome to another video on my channel. Today I'm making a card using a very special product. I found washi paper at my local art store and I know a lot of people have probably heard of washi tape which um, I have some washi tape here. This is very popular for using in day planners um, or using for decoration. Basically I looked up the meaning of washi tape and it's a Japanese term that basically means masking tape. Uh, they call it washi tape and in Canada or in English language I guess we already have masking tape um, and we already use that term. This is our masking tape. So we call it washi tape, which is the Japanese word. Now, if you've ever used washi tape, you'll find it's very soft and thin. It's easy to tear. It's not terribly sticky. And so the washi paper is very similar. It's very soft and it's so beautiful. And I have a pretty one to show you. So let's look at the materials I'm going to use to make this card. So this is a card for my sister's birthday. I'm starting with an A2 size folded card. I'm going to use a top folded format. And then I have downloaded a digital stamp. So I have a digital stamp that I purchased off of Etsy that I've printed out on Nina Solar White cardstock that I'm going to use um, with Copic markers to color it. Now, I have another video if you'd like to check that out on how to purchase a digital stamp on Etsy and then how to resize that for printing in both Illustrator or Photoshop. And I'll link that video in the description below if you'd like to check it out. So this is the digital stamp that I'm going to be using. And then I am going to use mixed media cardstock, and I'll explain why in a minute. I'm going to use uh, foam tape to put this on with, and this is the washi paper. This is absolutely gorgeous. So you can see that it has a gold glitter um, effect throughout, and it's in these beautiful secure leaves. Um, or secure blossoms. The paper itself is very delicate. It's almost like a fabric, a very thin fabric, um, and it's very soft. So it's kind of like washi tape. It really does remind me of that. It's got that soft, fabricy feel, but it's very delicate. So um, the reason why I'm using mixed media cardstock is because it's very firm, and this paper is very thin and delicate. So when I put this down, I want to put it on something that's got some weight to it to hold the shape of the washi paper. So I'm going to put this on mixed media cardstock just because of um, the support that it will give the washi paper. So these are the supplies that I'm going to use along with some Copic markers for coloring. So let's get started. So I want to cut out a piece of paper, um, a piece of the mixed media cardstock to leave a border. So I don't want it as big as my card. I want to inset it a little bit a little bit off the height and width, so about an inch off the height and width of my card base. So when I'm cutting paper I like to use my X-Acto knife and my metal ruler, my corkback ruler, and my cutting mat. I like to do this because I know I can get a straight line. I also have um, a paper cutter, a guillotine cutter, that I use for small cuts at my desk. But because this card is very special I want to make sure that the lines are perfect and I get a perfect square. So now I'm going to put the washi paper down. Here's a slow-mo look at it. It's so pretty. I thought it was so gorgeous and I was so excited to give her this card. So to put this on the card, I'm going to use my tape roller to adhere this with. That way I should have minimal bubbling. Um, because this paper is so delicate and thin, it will show any ripples, I think, or that's what my feeling is. So I thought that I could have it lay flat or get the flattest impression by using um, just the two-sided tape. And so I'm rimming the outside of the cardstock and then doing an X down the middle just to make sure it sticks well. Before I put this on, I want to make sure that I've got the right corner of paper. I like the pattern and the direction. And when I put this on, I'm just going to put it in from the edge. This way I can trim out each edge and make sure that it is exactly flush to the card base that I have. I'm going to change my knife blade as well because this paper is so delicate I don't want to risk any tearing that it might um, with the blade that, that might happen. It's very easy to cut and it only takes um, a light slice. I went through it a couple times and made sure that I had it perfect. It is a pretty unique fabric to cut. It's something I've never used before so I wanted to make sure that everything came out great and I didn't have any errors. And so now I have that cut and it is exactly perfect on all the edges, which is great. So now I'm ready to work on my digital stamp. 
I'm going to bring in my background just to keep an eye on it. As I pick the colors for my digital stamp, I want to make sure that they complement the background. So just by having that off to the side, I can keep referencing it and just seeing how they're working together as I lay down new colors. Now I've put all the colors listed in the description below and I've included most of my coloring here. I just sped it up quite a bit, but you can also slow down the YouTube video if you wanted to um, just look at the coloring and, and how I'm doing the, the gradients and blending the colors together. So I thought for this one I would use a nice powder blue. She kind of reminded me of a classic uh, 60s girl, uh, shopping girl, and it was kind of funny when I put the blue on the dress, it kind of reminded me of a Pan Am stewardess costume or something. But I thought the blue would be a nice compliment and stand out well among the pinks and the purples in and the, and the cream tones in the card. And my sister is a very girly girl, so I wanted to make sure this was very whimsical and light for her and really echoed her personality. And I imagined her being this girl because my sister does love shopping as well. So I thought that this was a nice little picture of her. And so now I'm coming in with some creams too, and I want to use a balance of colors. I don't want to use a lot in my color palette because I don't want it to be too busy. I do want this to be the focal point, and I think the blue will help with that because I'm only using it on the dress and the hat. But I don't want to put in too many colors and get it too busy because I still want that background to show up as well and be um, part of the focal point as well, but not the main focal point. But I do want them to complement and work together. So now my sister has strawberry blonde hair, so I'm starting with a yellow base just to do my highlights. And then I'm going to darken up the hair as I come in with the different layers and bring in some red tones, some reddish brown tones as well, just to get her hair color. And so I just like doing light wisps starting from the shadow parts of the hair and then flicking the brush up towards the highlight lines. And so I find by doing this with every layer that it keeps those white parts so you get those highlights and then it still feels like strands of hair because you're doing those flicking motions and you're not just coloring it solid. And so I was really happy with the way it turned out. So I, when I started with the yellow, it was kind of really light and um, I worried about bringing in the colors that would be more reddish and darkish, but by the time I made my layers, they all worked really well together and had um, nice tones that built um, nice layers together. So it did really more so look like my sister in the end. And so I'm just adding in some shadows here and then I'll start coloring the presents. I'm really loving mint green as well, um, or teal, turquoise, those colors. And so I wanted to include those in the card as well. I thought that they would be a nice complement to the blue and kind of help that um, part of the image uh, stand out a little bit or complement it. And it also reminded me of Tiffany. So kind of the Tiffany green. And again, that's something my sister would love. So I thought that that would be nice to include with the boxes or the presents that she's carrying. And then to help tie it together, I'm bringing in some light pinks, almost lilac pinks, and that will help bring in the colors from the washi paper so that the element doesn't feel totally orphaned from the background. There's a little bit of complementing going on where, um, or symmetry that they're um, syncing together. Now, once I have this um, all colored, I am going to cut it out. So. Um, it's nice to be able to use digital stamps. I like that because I can just go online and there's kind of a open library to just um, endless library to look at, especially on Etsy. There's a lot of um, digital stamp illustrators on Etsy and there's some beautiful stuff out there. So it's really nice to have so many options. The downside is that I don't have many wafer dies to match them. So instead of being able to use my Sizzix, I do have to cut this out by hand. And so I'm very meticulous and this is why I usually like getting dies with my stamps because I hate doing fussy cutting, but I wanted to make sure that this was really nice for my sister's card. So I came in with my X-Acto knife and I cut it out by hand. Now, I find if you're gonna do this method, it's easiest to do it in sections. Don't try to do it all in one fluid line. Um, I like to go in and cut out pieces. So you can see that I'm cutting out wedges away from 
the object or the, the picture. So just cutting away pieces and working on those small areas, not trying to just do a perfect line all the way around because that's almost impossible, especially on corners. Sometimes when I'm doing corners, I cut it in lines. I don't do one fluid um, curve, but I just do little short cuts to make that curve. And it can still look round that way. And then if you have any um, irregular bumps on the curve, you can just trim them really easily with the knife and, and flatten them out. So this did take me a while and it's not something I would want to do all the time. But like I mentioned, this was a very special gift. And so I wanted to make sure that it was done well. So I guess it's not terribly complicated, it's just time consuming is, is the only thing. But it looks so nice when it's done. And so I was really excited to get this finished and see how it looked with the washi paper. So here's a look at the card. Now because there is a lot of busyness in the background, I wanted to put a piece of vellum down just to um, elevate the center focal point a little bit more away from that paper. So to help do this, I'm putting some foam tape in on the base, and then I'm going to put the vellum over top. And so what this does is it lifts that vellum up from the washi paper so that you can't see the patterned part of the background as clearly. It kind of muddies it a little bit, um, or blurs it, I guess. So that way it helps elevate the visual focal point a little bit more. And I found this helped enough, but didn't detract too much from the card. So I raised this up by using two pieces of foam tape and I like that it's making the background blurry. It's almost like a bokeh effect if you're a camera um, or a photographer, you'd understand that bokeh is usually when you get the dancing blurry lights in the background and, and, and out, of, out of focus um, background. Now I'm using the back of my blade to score the paper. Vellum's kind of thick and it doesn't fold easily. I don't want a lot of cracking and so the way you can prevent this is just by running the back of your knife blade a couple times. Don't cut all the way through it, but just um, weaken the paper in that spot where you want to fold and then it's easier to fold over. And then I'm just tacking that down with a bit of my roller tape. So now I'm ready to attach um, the artwork. I'm going to put a piece of tape on that as well and then just center the girl on top. So now it's ready to go on the card base. I'm going to use foam tape again. I love foam tape. You guys know that. And so I'm putting it all the way around and then some in the middle to support the weight in the center. And so for this one, I did pull out my knife. I want to make sure it's centered because there's not much of an edge. So you would notice it was if it was offline. So now I want to dress this up a little bit more. It just felt a little bland. So I'm coming in with my Sharpie, um, my Sharpie pen. This is in gold. I love this pen. It's so pretty. And the nice thing about this is it makes an opaque gold. So unlike a gel pen where you kind of, it's kind of translucent, you can see through it or transparent, um, the Sharpie pen is opaque. So it doesn't take much to get a nice solid gold um, line. So I'm going to trim the outside edge of my card, that white line, or sorry, the white card, and do a gold line. And then I'm putting gold along the vellum as well. I wanted a thicker line, so I did come back with my ruler after I had drawn my lines and just thickened them up. I want to make sure they were straight. The one thing, if you do use a ruler, you want to make sure that the tip of your Sharpie is not pushed up against your ruler if it's laying flat on your artwork. Otherwise, it will bleed underneath your ruler and make a mess. So I t um, when I'm doing this, I just tilt the edge of my Sharpie out a bit so it's not connecting um, with the ruler at the base. So here's a look at the finished card, and I was really excited about how this turned out. I was so proud to give this to her, and she loved it, and it was so much fun. And I love the washi paper. I just thought it was gorgeous. And using the digital stamp gave me so many more options for this card and it turned out so well. If you have any digital stamp um, stores that you shop from that you like, list them in the comments below. I'd be curious to check out some more. If you did like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you're notified as I post more videos. Thank you so much for watching.